Welcome to your week to yoga flow. We are still focusing on pelvic floor down training, as well as our goals of improving 360 degree breathing and connecting our inhale to pelvic floor length and relaxation. One of the primary goals this week as well is to continue focusing on rotation. So you'll be seeing a lot of rotation in today's yoga movement. All you're going to need is your mat and two yoga blocks. So we are going to start in child's pose. And what we're going to do is we're going to come into a narrow knees child's pose and we're going to stick those blocks right between our ribs and our legs. Now we're going to come down with our palms facing up. I want you to leave about a hip width distance between your arms. And when you do that, I want you to just slightly act as if you were gonna draw those forearms together, but they're not gonna move in space. And so as you do that and slightly drag into the mat, you're gonna round your upper back. Now you're gonna inhale here, tongue to the roof of your mouth, jaw is gently apart, and exhale, open mouth, sigh. Again, breathe in and breathe out. Now, when this happens, what we're trying to do is emphasize our back body expansion. So remember, it's breathing into the back part of our shoulder blades. The ribs are going to act as a physical block. When we breathe in, that those ribs don't expand too much. And when we exhale, we just soften. Now, that uh, the wrists coming up and the palms facing up is going to achieve the same goal. It's going to help us round the upper back as we inhale. Soft and gentle expansion and exhale. We're trying to make space in the back so that when we come into more rotation, we have room for that. As well as again, we're just teaching and learning in our body. If back body breathing feels foreign, what does it feel like? And if you can start to breathe into it in these relaxed positions and identify how to feel that, you're gonna be able to start to bring that into our exercise. So let's take two more breaths here, inhale. Never forcing breath, next exhale. On your next breath, see if you can string that inhale out a little bit longer. So see if you can drag it a little bit longer and deeper. And then see if you can match that length with your exhale. Good. Come on up, set your blocks aside. We are gonna come into a tall seat. Now, crisscross applesauce those ankles and then pull the fleshy part of your bottom out of the way. We wanna anchor it down between our sits bones. That way we can feel a neutral pelvis. Remember, a neutral pelvis and stacked ribs is going to align our diaphragms. So don't be afraid to reach underneath, move that out of the way. We're gonna come into some seated cat cows. I want you to reach your arms out in front of you as you exhale, interlace and press away. And then on an inhale, flip the palms, reach toward the ceiling, breathe in. When your exhale is ready, exhale, reach and round. Breathe in. And exhale, reach and round. Now inhale, flip the palms, reach up, breathe in. Think about the sides of your waist expanding as well as that lateral rib cage. Now reach and round, press away and stay here. Now inhale, breathe into the back side of your ribs. So I want you to think about that posterior expansion we've been cultivating. I'm gonna turn to the side so I can breathe with you like that. And then exhale, reach and round. Inhale, exhale, reach, press away. Stay for an inhale, breathe into the back. Exhale, pause for an inhale. Good, go ahead and release the fingertips, keep the arms long. We're gonna breathe in here, reach the fingertips to the sky, relax your shoulders down your back. One more breath in, reach long, exhale, twist. Now we're gonna stay here. I want you to first just frame your hips and knees with your fingertips. And just gently place your fingertips on the mat. Use those to help anchor your hips down. Reach the crown of your head long, and then start to turn toward your opposite back shoulder. Now breathe here and breathe out. When you inhale, you're inhaling into the ribs that you're twisting away from and breathing out. 
When we twist, we create compression on one side so we can open more on the opposite. So I want you to purposely think about that side that we're rotating away from. Now go ahead and release, come back up. Let's take an inhale here. And then exhale as you twist. Frame the back side and your knee with your fingertips. Keep your hips square. We're gonna twist between the shoulders. Now breathe into the ribs you're twisting away from. Inhale. Lateral and back body breathing. Inhale, reach the crown of your head long. Exhale, see if you can turn your gaze deeper over your shoulder and breathe out. Another inhale. And long, slow exhale. Good, slowly release. We're gonna come on two hands and knees and we're gonna walk into puppy. So in puppy, hips are over knees and then slowly walk those fingertips long in front of you. Now we don't wanna dip into the back. So as your chin and chest come down toward the mat, actively press palms into mat. Those arms are gonna start to work a little bit and we're gonna draw the ribs and pelvis in line. And we're gonna just stay and breathe here. Inhale. Exhale. So even though our arms are active, you should still have a fair amount of belly relaxation happening. So allow that breath into the ribs, backside of our body and our belly. Now on your next inhale, really just think about that open space between your sits bones and see if you can send that inhale into the back part of your pelvic floor. Exhale as you yield and relax. Again, one more. And release. Now slowly walk your hands back underneath your shoulders. We're gonna take an adductor rock back. So you're gonna send one leg out long and it's gonna try to stay in line with your hips. Now, if your hips are really tight and this is a position of discomfort or in other words, a position where you can't breathe without creating more tension in your body, I want you to take that decreased range of motion and slide that leg back, okay? So honor yourself where you're at. And then you're gonna try to seal down the inner edge of your foot. Now we're gonna inhale, send the hips back. Exhale, come forward. Breathe in, lateral rib cage. Think about sending the breath to the back as we lengthen through the inner thigh. And exhale, come up. Now you're gonna move through the range of motion that feels good for you. So maybe you don't make it in that full rock back. And maybe you only go partial or halfway. So maybe those hips only glide back a little bit. Remember, the entire goal is decreased tension and allow the nervous system to reset. If we get into a position where it's difficult to breathe, we're gonna be very counterintuitive to the whole practice here. Let's do one more together. Inhale, send the hips back. Exhale, come forward. Draw that leg in and then go ahead and switch. Send the opposite one out long. Seal down the inner edge of your foot and then together inhale. Exhale, come back. Breathe in. And breathe out. Inhale, send the hips back. Exhale as you come forward. And I'm gonna remind you again that if you're not used to slow movement, sometimes, sometimes the things that we resist most in our life are the things that we need the most. The entire goal is to reset our foundation together so we can build back. So whatever pelvic floor issues you are having, you need to figure out what the missing link was. As we explored in our education phase, there's so many things, go ahead and take one more together, that can impact our pelvic floor. So we're gonna try to peel back all of those layers we need to dial it back, come back to our breathing foundation, and then see how we can rebuild and repair from there. Now we're gonna take thread the needle. So I want you to reach your fingertips up on an inhale. Exhale, thread the arm underneath, shoulder and forehead come to the mat. Now just like our kneeling twists we've done before, check in with your hips, tuck them back in line, 
and then continue to twist between the shoulders. You can keep your arm here, you can reach your arm long. If you'd like more sensation, you reach that arm around, and thread for a little bit of a bind. Now we're still gonna breathe into the sides of the waist and the ribs that we're rotating away from. And this position is double duty because those hips are nice and high, breathing into the pelvic floor and helping it to relax as well. Slowly release, come on back up, take another inhale as you reach up and open, set the hand back down. Now we switch, inhale, reach the fingertips up, gaze up, exhale, thread the needle, shoulder and forehead to the mat. Now again, check in with those hips and then take either the position of your arm closest to your body, you can reach long or you can feel free to take that bind. Now inhale here and exhale. Breathing into the ribs you're twisting away from. We're gonna create length in that backside of the body. Focusing on rotation a little bit more this week. So that rotation not only lets the diaphragm expand, but if you, my friends, are ab grippers, you're gripping your abs because you're looking for stability somewhere. We need to be able to release that tension first. And if you are someone who tends to fall into more of an anterior tilt, when we change that plane of movement, we actually lose rotation in our body. So if you were to come back to a more neutral position and then twist, then you're gonna have that more available range of motion and rotation happening in your body. So we're facilitating neutrality thus far in our program and we're facilitating more expansion. Now go ahead and stay on your knees, but we are gonna come down to our elbows. So we wanna be in a little bit of a very slight inversion happening for us. And again, we're gonna breathe and focus on breathing into the backside of our body. So just a gentle round as you press the forearms into the mat, similar to how we started. Breathe in and breathe out. When you do that, we're working on creating, again, not only space in the backside, but when we create a gentle forward inversion, we're going to allow that ability for our diaphragm breathing to help move our abdominal contents back up. So if you're someone, again, who struggles with belly breathing too much, diastasis recti, prolapse, we're going to facilitate that belly, that lower belly protrusion. We're going to help move things up as we just come back to our natural diaphragm breathing. So those inhales into the back, belly, and sides of the waist. And exhale. We're gonna take two more here. Breathe in. Press away. Breathe out. One more. Nice, go ahead and come on down to your belly. We're gonna take a prone chest stretch. That looks like sending the arm out long. Come up onto those fingertips like a tripod and press away and roll open. So opening through the chest. If this is not a comfortable movement on your belly, then you're just gonna interlace your hands behind your back and press them down and stay and breathe here. So either option to open through the chest. Remember every inhale, we're making space. Every exhale, you're gonna yield and soften. Breathing in and breathing out. Go ahead and release and switch. Send the opposite arm out long. If you're interlacing your hands, you can take a break and then start over, see if that feels any different. Just opening through the chest. If we're prone to really round through the backside of our body, you know, like looking at a computer all day or looking at our cell phone, if we wanna strengthen the backside of our postural muscles, we need to be able to have that space in the front of the chest as well. Go ahead and slowly release and then come on up onto your forearms. We're just gonna stay here for a brief moment. So basically in a mini cobra here. What I want you to think about is we're not just laying on these forearms and our shoulders. We're gonna press away. We've worked on a lot of our pressing away. 
And then I want you to think about drawing your elbows back toward your hips without them moving in space. So a little isometric helps create some length through the spine. Collarbone is long toward the front. You're gonna breathe in and breathe out. Now the front of the mat and the floor is gonna block too much belly expansion again, just so we can breathe into the back body. One more. Awesome, slowly release, press on back up and we're gonna come onto hands and knees, wrists under shoulders, knees under hips. Now we focused a lot on posterior expansion. We're gonna do another movement for that, which means we're gonna round the spine like we're coming into a cat back. And then we're slowly gonna shift our nose forward. So you've seen this one before. The core turns on automatically when we're in this position. So I want you to feel that. We're positionally turning the core on, so we're not trying to create an active pelvic floor lift, and we're just gonna breathe here. That soft inhale is gonna go into the back side of the upper back. And exhale. All the air out. Breathe in again. Back body expansion. Learning how to breathe with core tension is super important. Again, inhale, soft inhale, press the floor away. And exhale. Unclench your jaw, two more, inhale. And exhale. We cannot add strength if we don't start from a more neutral position with full breathing expansion in every direction. Okay, go ahead and sit back, bottom to heels, reach your arms long, tent the fingertips, inhale, and exhale. One more breath here. Good. Let's come on to our back. So slowly scoot around, slowly come down all the way. Keep your knees bent. We're gonna take some lower trunk rotation. So together those knees are gonna rock to one side. Exhale, come through midline. Inhale, drop. Stretching through the back side of the hip and that low back. Exhale, inhale, continue. Inhale. One more, inhale. Now stay here and breathe. Turn your gaze over the opposite fingers. Now here's an option to take a little bit deeper stretch if you can grab for the backs of those knees. We're working towards keeping the shoulders flat on the mat. Inhale into the back side that we are rotating away from, that our hips are rotating away from. So we focused a lot on posterior expansion. We did a lot of thoracic rotation today. Now we're gonna make sure we hit that part above the pelvis that can impact and restrict our pelvic mobility before we move into pelvic floor specific lengthening stretch at the end. Go ahead and switch. Now gaze over the opposite and then stay and breathe here. So again, we're breathing into this part of our back. Lots of blood vessels and nerves course through here and enter into the pelvis. If we have restriction here, it can compress on those structures and create symptoms in our pelvic floor. We're gonna make sure we keep that spot mobile. Breathe in, breathe out, shoulders are on the mat. Again, it's optional to grab four of those knees. You don't have to. And then come on back up. Now, extend one leg long, draw your knee into your chest. Stay here for two breaths, creating some length through the hip flexor and psoas. Breathe in. Breathe out. Opposite hand to knee. Go ahead and twist. Gaze over the opposite hand. So a different a little bit of a different twist here than what we just did with both knees. A little supine twist allows us to get a little deeper into that lumbar rotation as well. Go ahead and release. Send that leg long and switch. Draw the opposite one, knee to chest. Two breaths here, inhale. Exhale. Long calming exhales 
and exhale. Breathe in here, hand to opposite knee, exhale twist. He is over the opposite fingertips. Shoulders are on the mat. Breathe into the glutes, breathe into the low back. Our lumbar spine is getting some more motion here than our first twist. And maybe you just feel more open compared to the first rotation we took. Restoring rotation is so important. I mentioned why, so that we don't ab grip, but because we are reciprocal beings, meaning when we walk, one side rotates opposite or moves in an opposite direction to create recoil so that we can move forward again. So we really need to be purposeful with re-implementing that if that's something that you've lost. All right, bring the soles of your feet together. We're gonna come into a diamond pose, grabbing for the feet. You can also always grab for the shins. And we're gonna try to hold for a few breaths here. Again, very pelvic floor specific. Try to anchor the pelvis and the tailbone to the mat so that when you inhale, we lengthen into that triangle. So bringing your attention to that now that we've created space through our hips and back and posterior expansion, when you breathe in, do you feel your pelvic floor relaxing? That's super vital to know how to achieve that pelvic floor length. So even when you come into times of tension during your day, which is definitely going to happen, that's okay. Do you know how to inhale and release it? You know how to assess tension in your body, do a body scan, and then release that with breath and knowing you let go of that tension. One more breath here. And slowly release. Draw those knees into your chest. Give them a nice little hug. You can go ahead and curl up. And we're gonna take one more position. So I want you to grab one of your blocks. We're gonna take hips on a block. You slide that block underneath your low back and reach the soles of your feet up toward the ceiling. Now you can always do this against a wall as well if you prefer. And I want you to play around with your block placement. I'm not dogmatic about it being directly underneath the pelvis. The entire goal is that your legs feel completely unweighted so that you can relax. So for me, sometimes I honestly like to bring that block out a little bit so it's like a fulcrum and then I just really feel that weightless feeling and I want you to bring your hands to your belly and rib cage so that when you breathe in can you feel a soft relaxed belly and maybe you can't and you just give a little bit of gentle massage just easing those muscles to relax if you hold on to tension you can gently massage the diaphragm as we've been doing in the first two weeks while you're in this position. And you're just always checking in with that nervous system, with your habits. We can't change things that we're not even aware that we're doing. But if we create that heightened awareness temporarily, we find ways to control that and make a change. And then as life changes and times of stress ebb and flow, you already have the ability to have some control over that when it does happen and find those moments to release and relax. So maybe you're rubbing your belly gently or that diaphragm, but let's take a nice big inhale and exhale. Open your mouth, sigh it out. Again, breathe in, use your hands to feel that belly relaxation. Ribs expand, exhale. One more time, breathe in. Exhale. Draw your knees in, slowly remove that block. And then take your time rolling onto your side before popping up onto a seat. Wrapping up our week two yoga flow, still aimed at pelvic floor down training, connecting our breath to our rib cage expansion, as well as feeling that pelvic floor length and relaxation happening so that when it's time to add strength, we know how to feel both of those extremes of range of motion. I look forward to seeing you in our next workout.